Welcome back to The Lost Constellations. I'm John Barentine, Director of Public Policy at IDA. Throughout International Dark Sky Week 2020, we've explored constellations that once appeared on star charts, but that were discarded in the early 20th century in a process that gave us the night sky recognized by modern astronomers. Today's lost constellation is Sciurus Bolans, the flying squirrel. This figure is an example of a single source constellation, which appeared on one and only one published map. We know of relatively few such instances because printed maps were remarkably expensive to produce and distribute until the true mass production of printed materials starting in the 19th century. The market for star charts was comparatively small, historically speaking, so the producers of such charts often took a big financial risk in making and selling them. And by the time that print media became widely available, there just wasn't a lot of unclaimed space left in the night sky into which enterprising map makers could insert their own inventions. The American cartographer William Croswell introduced the constellation in 1810 on his Mercator map of the starry heavens, one of the first charts of the night sky to be printed in North America. Croswell borrowed stars from the existing constellation Camelopardalus, the giraffe, to create his new figure. He may not have been aware that many of the same stars had been previously appropriated by European astronomers only a generation before to form the constellation Custos Messium, the harvest keeper, which we explored in an earlier episode of this series. However, no other map makers evidently accepted Croswell's suggestion as the flying squirrel appeared on no other star charts for the remainder of the 19th century. Described by biographer Robert Lovett as, quote, an early 19th century eccentric who tried hard to make a name for himself in American science and letters, unquote, Croswell was a jack of many trades that included teaching and cataloging the entire collection of the Harvard University Library, but he maintained a lifelong interest in astronomy. In the text accompanying his map, Croswell defended his creation on aesthetic grounds. He wrote, quote, the flying squirrel occupies a part of the space usually allotted to the limbs of the camel leopard, which is a modern constellation. As the body would fall without the map, an entire animal has been substituted, unquote. Only 600 copies of Croswell's celestial map were printed, and it includes two new constellations, Scurus Volans and Marmor Sculpteel, a marble bust of the Italian explorer Christopher Columbus intended to replace the southern constellation Reticulum, the reticle. Marmor Sculpteel is an example of an attempted rebranding of an existing constellation in which one map maker disregarded what appeared on competitors' charts and appropriated a name group of stars to their own design. Like its flying companion, however, this particular patriotic invention intended to honor the European discovery of the New World failed to gain popularity, and it was soon forgotten. Flying squirrels are a tribe of 50 species in the family Securidae. Given that Croswell lived in the northern United States, it is likely that he intended his constellation to represent Glaucomus sabrinus, the northern flying squirrel. The small mammals don't actually fly like bats, but rather they glide through the air from tree to tree by extending their patagium, a furry membrane stretching from their wrists to their ankles, which functions like a parachute. Unlike most members of the family, flying squirrels are strictly nocturnal creatures. Their survival depends on gliding from tree to tree under the cover of nighttime darkness, because their slow speeds make them vulnerable to birds of prey that hunt during the daytime. To find Sciurus volans, first locate Polaris, also called the North Star, and from there scan around for the five bright stars comprising the M or W shape of the constellation Cassiopeia. Which letter it resembles depends on the time of year. Then locate the bright yellow star Capella much further to the east. Nearly between these are several bright stars marking the northern part of the constellation Perseus. From there, look a few degrees back towards Polaris for some fainter fourth and fifth magnitude stars. Several of these mark the former flying squirrel. Join me one more time tomorrow for the final Lost Constellations installment for International Dark Sky Week 2020. We'll look at a figure honoring one of the most prolific astronomers in English history and a real telescope that he once used. <laughs>